Next question is from Garrett Ferguson. Do you think intermittent fasting can be used long term? Does it lose its effectiveness? Okay, so when you look at from a physiological standpoint, okay, when you have uh, people that intermittent fast versus people that don't intermittent fast, all other factors being equal, calories, macros, same types of food, similar lifestyles, doesn't make a difference at all, okay? But that doesn't mean it doesn't make a difference. And the reason why I'm saying that is because all factors are not always the same. Mm. Uh, fasting is appropriate for some people and for other people, it's terrible. It's a terrible idea. If you're a high stress individual, if mm. your hormones are out of whack, uh, skipping meals can can not be a good. It can be a bad thing. It can lower testosterone. It can it can cause imbalances with estrogen and progesterone in women. If you have issues with food, if you're somebody that in the past would restrict yourself from eating, uh, if you if you leaned more towards the anorexia bulimia side, maybe you weren't uh, all that that far, but that's the side you lean to. Fasting is a bad idea. It's just called starving yourself uh, and seeing how long you can not eat. Um, if you're on the other side, though, if you're somebody that tends to overeat and wants to eat every three hours or two hours because you are obsessed with building muscle, then it may be a good thing. Fasting from a physiological fitness, physical health standpoint, it's not a tool I like to use very often. I like to use it as a psychological tool, as a tool for people who may need to develop different relationships with food and only for the right kind of people. Yeah. Other than that, it's not something that I really should, I don't think should be used by a lot of people. Well, you see the popularity of it still is like increasing and a lot of it mainly is about staying in that window. And that's what's being promoted the most right now is, is you know, I have this, this, this block that I'm trying to eat everything within this eight hour window uh, as the answer to keep everybody lean. And so people like will keep this, this window is they're they're from here on out. I'm going to try and eat this way. And I just, I have a problem with trying to be that structured all the time, not allowing for any flexibility to begin with, regardless of if it gives you like the, the type of benefits that it gives you initially, uh, you know, at some point, uh, your, your body is going to change and you have to be able to adapt with it. Well, I, I go back and forth on this because, it it also kind of reminds me of the the generic advice of don't eat past seven, right? Or don't mm -hmm. eat past six o'clock. And we've there's all kinds of science that we've seen that supports that that doesn't make a difference, right? It doesn't matter if all calories and everything is measured equal. It doesn't matter. Same thing goes for an intermittent fasting window. But if you go into it with the intention of what you you recognize your behaviors of oh when I eat at this time or I eat at that time I tend to make bad choices. So I've found that if I make this two o'clock to seven o'clock window, as in the only time that I'll allow to eat, I notice I always tend to make better choices. Mm -hmm. And that is your purpose behind always doing intermittent fasting long term. I'm for it. And I and I know that there's some people in our in our space. In fact, I was just watching uh I don't I think it was another Max uh, interview that he was talking to somebody about this. And it's just uh, a rule that they have made for themselves to keep themselves healthy long term is they found that, hey, if I just, I can, I don't tell myself I necessarily can't have this or can't have that, but I say, hey, I can eat between 12 and seven o'clock or whatever their window mm -hmm. is. And as long as I stay within that window, I tend to make much healthier and better choices. I like that and I'm okay with that. The only thing, I, uh, and I know that we caution people a lot on this show because like everything else in this space, it gets really popular and it gets marketed to as a great fat loss tool. Right. And then you get people, in fact, I was just having a conversation uh, last night with my brother's uh, girlfriend and she was talking about intermittent fasting. Oh, I, I love it. You know, and she's not doing it right now. And so she uses it like a diet. You know, it's like, oh, it's, you know, I've put on some weight since, you know, Thanksgiving. And so they used to call it skipping a meal. Right. Uh, and so I'm going to intermittent <laughs> yeah. fast. It's not a lifestyle for her. It's not like she's doing it because she knows that she makes better choices when she's, you know, she sees it as a strategy to lose weight. I am not for that. I don't think that's more. But there's some people that are, are aware of, th of this and they go, okay. I make better choices and behaviors when I eat in this window. And so this does work for me and it's a lifestyle. It can actually result in worse behaviors too. I've, I've actually mm. witnessed this in clients where they'll do the fasted window. So like, okay, two to six is when I eat. They end up binging in the two to six. Oh, it's two o'clock. Go nuts. You know, oh my God, it's almost six. I got to get all my food in before, you know, my, I'm out of my window. Right. And they end up encouraging this kind of binge uh, behavior. It really does depend on. A law on the person. It is not the magical thing that we've heard in the past. 
Uh, if the calories are equal, it doesn't matter. Uh, the reason why some people lose weight intermittent fasting is because they're not eating as many calories. That's the bottom line. 